Hello and welcome back to this video on the Juno's user interface. This one is the third video of the Juno's user interface. In the last video we looked at topics such as filtering output. We understood how we can use the pipe command to filter the output. We also looked at some output levels like TERS, brief, extended and detail. We looked at the differences between active and candidate configuration. We also looked at the configuration modes such as private, shared and exclusive. We looked at the different configuration hierarchies and we also looked at some navigation commands. In this video, we're going to focus on these topics. We're going to start by taking a look at the Juno's commit model. We'll then follow it up with the Juno's rollback model. We'll also understand Juno's configuration files. And finally, we'll spend some time talking about JWeb. All right, so let's begin with the Juno's commit model. So I'm logged into the device. I'm just going to resize the window. Okay. The first command I want to talk to you about is the show compare command. This command is useful when you want to take a look at your configuration before you go ahead and commit it. For example, let me go into edit and let me take a look at show system. As you can see here, the name server that I'm using right now is 4.2.2.2. Let me go ahead and change that. So first up, I'm going to go into the edit system configuration hierarchy. And I'm going to say set name server. I'll do a question mark and it shows me the currently configured value. I'm going to change that to 8.8.8.8. Now with Juno's, what happens is if you do this, it's going to add one more name server to the existing list. Now this is slightly different from some of the other vendors where if you type this command it would actually go and replace this. But if I did this in Juno's 8.8.8.8 will get added as one more name server along with 4.2.2.2. Okay. So for now I'm going to hit enter and I'm also going to delete the existing name server. So let me say delete name server I'm going to delete 4.2.2.2 so I'm done with my changes. I'm going to go to the top. And before I hit the commit command, I can do what is known as show compare. The command is show pipe compare. You hit enter and it shows you what are the configuration items that have changed. So it shows you that you've added 8.8.8.8 because there's a plus sign. A plus indicates an addition. A minus indicates a deletion. So I've added 8.8.8.8 .8 and I've removed 4.2.2.2. Now you may be wondering what's up with these over here. This is from my previous configuration. I've actually not committed the changes. So it's also showing up in the list. But the bottom line is this command here, show compare, it's very useful to check out your changes before you go ahead and commit them. One more command that I wanted to talk about is the commit check command which allows you to check and verify your configuration before you go ahead and commit it. Now imagine this, if you're making major configuration changes on your device. Let's say your changes go into several hundreds of set commands. And when you hit the commit command, there is a chance that your commit may fail. And you don't want that to happen because otherwise you'll have to go back and review your changes. Instead, what you can do is you can do commit check Junos will actually check and let you know if your configuration is going to successfully commit or not. Let's try that. Let's do commit check. All right, so it checks the configuration that you're about to commit and lets you know that the configuration check has succeeded. Now, this is very good because before I actually commit it, I know that my changes are going to work. If it's not going to work, it's going to give me an error message saying, saying the configuration changes are not acceptable. So now that I know that the check has succeeded, I can go ahead and hit the commit command. All right, let's move on. The other item that I wanted to talk about is commit confirmed. Now this is a very useful command if you're performing configuration changes from a remote location. Let's say you're managing your firewall remotely and let's say you're making some changes to the interface IP address. Now there is a high probability that the configuration may not work and you may be locked out of your device. Commit confirmed can help you in these situations. When you do commit confirm, Junos is going to commit your configuration, but it's going to roll back your configuration to the previous state in the next 10 minutes. So what you do is you hit commit confirmed. If you're okay with the changes, if everything is working fine, you can issue a commit one more time and your configuration becomes permanent. 
If you do not hit a commit one more time, your changes are going to be rolled back. Now 10 minutes is the default timer. You can actually change this to any value that you like. Okay, so I can say commit confirm three, so it's gonna wait for three minutes. If I do not issue one more commit, the changes get rolled back. If I give one more commit, the changes become permanent. This is very useful if you're doing changes from a remote location. One more commit command that I want to talk about is commit at. Hit a question mark. It will give you an option to enter the time at which you want to commit your changes. For example, I can say commit at 1700 UTC. Now UTC is the time zone that's set on my device. Commit at 1700. Hit enter. And it first does a configuration check. It succeeds. So the commit will be executed at so-and-so date, 1700 UTC. Now before you try this command, make sure you have the system clock perfectly set. Now let's say you actually issued the command, but then you changed your mind. You do not want the schedule commit to happen. You can change that by doing clear system commit. That's going to roll back any pending schedule commits. All right, one last commit command before we move to the next topic. That one is commit, all right, I need to move to the configuration mode first. So I'm gonna to go to edit and I'll say commit and quit. This is a command that will commit your configuration and take you back to the operational mode. So we've completed the Juno's commit options. Let's now talk about rollback. Now, if you remember from the last video, we spoke about the differences between active configuration and candidate configuration. We also discussed that the configuration that is currently loaded on the device is the active config. When you actually hit edit or configure, the device actually creates a copy of your active configuration, which is now known as the candidate configuration. You're actually making changes on the candidate config and not on the active config. When you commit your changes, the candidate configuration now gets saved as the current active configuration. The reason I'm talking about this is because we have a concept called as rollback in Junos. The current active configuration, the configuration that is currently running on the device, is saved as rollback zero. Rollback zero is a configuration file that contains your current active configuration. So let's go back to the device for a second. We spoke about the show compare command. Let me quickly make some changes. Set system, name server. I'm going to revert back to 4.2.2.2. And I'm going to do show compare. And it shows me that these changes are going to be made. Now remember, when you do show compare, you're actually comparing the currently modified configuration, which is also known as the candidate configuration, with the active configuration, which is the currently running configuration. But we just discussed that the active configuration is also known as rollback zero. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm doing show compare rollback zero and I'm going to get the same output. You see the same output is here and here. That's because your active configuration is stored as rollback zero. So when you have a blank device, let's say we've just purchased a new device, it has no config as such. When I make my first configuration change and I commit it, that gets stored as rollback zero. Now let's say I make some more changes and when I hit commit, that one gets saved as rollback zero. And rollback zero, which was the previous one, now gets saved as rollback one. If I make some more changes and hit commit, rollback one now becomes rollback two. Rollback zero now becomes rollback one and the changes that I've made, that configuration now becomes rollback zero. The total number of rollback configurations that you can save is 50. That's the max. And it is numbered starting from zero. So you go from zero to 49. That's the max that you can save on your device. You can obviously lower this number if you'd like. So remember, when you do show compare, you're actually comparing to rollback zero, which is also your active config. Now you can also compare with some other rollback files. You can do show compare rollback one maybe. And it's gonna show you the changes with respect to rollback one. You can try rollback two. You can see here, there are some more changes when I compare my current modified config with rollback two. 
If you want to take a look at all the rollback files that are stored on your device, you can say rollback and hit a question mark and it will show you all the rollbacks that have been saved so far and it will show you when the rollback was actually saved. The rollback command is especially useful when you want to discard your changes. So I'm going to do show compare one more time. And as you can see, these are the changes that will be committed when I hit the commit command. But let's say I changed my mind and I do not want to commit these changes anymore. What I can do is I can revert to the current active config by hitting rollback zero. Because rollback zero is the same as active configuration. So I'll say rollback zero, hit enter, and it says load complete. And I have to follow it up with a commit command. So always remember, when you do rollback, you have to follow it up with a commit command. Like we just discussed, the maximum number of rollback files that you can save is 50. If you wanted to change this number, you can say set system rollback. Oh no, set system max configuration hyphen rollback and hit a question mark. The max that you can say is 49. That means 0 to 49, a total of 50 rollback files but you can lower this down to any value that's less than 49. So let's say if I wanted to have only 10 rollback files on my device, I would say rollback nine. That means zero to nine, a total of 10 different rollback files. And I have to go ahead and issue the commit command to finalize my changes. All right, so that's about Juno's rollback. Let's now talk about configuration files. And before that, I'm gonna go ahead and clear my screen. All right, so I have a fresh board to write on. By the way, if you notice some changes in the layout and you know just the way things look right now, that's because I've moved to a different software which is called as GIMP. GIMP is an open source image editing tool. So I'm actually using GIMP right now to write on the board, just in case you're curious. Let's now talk about Juno's configuration files. Back to the device. Now if I wanted to save my current configuration to a file, what I can do is I can use the save command, hit a question mark, and I can give the name of the file to which I want to save my configuration. So I'll say save, let's call it my config. Hit enter, and it says 242 lines have been written to a file called as my config. Now I can also use show compare to compare my changes with an existing file, in this case my config. It does not give you an output because my config is the same config that I have on the device right now. But the point is you can actually compare your changes, your current candidate configuration to any config file as well. For the next command, let's move out to operational mode. Junos allows you to compare any two configuration files. The way to do that is file, compare, and then files. And then you have to specify the names of the two files that you want to compare. Let's try this one here. Let's try my config and let's try this one here, config one. So that shows you a comparison between these two files. And one more command before I forget, I'm gonna go back to configuration mode. Just like we can save the current configuration to a file, we can also save the current configuration using FTP or SCP. The way to do that is you say save and then you say FTP colon, give the username, give the password followed by a colon, and then you give at the IP address where you want the file to be saved and then the path of the file. So this way you can actually save the current config to a file using FTP. FTP, username colon password at IP address and then the path and the file name. You could also replace FTP with SCP if you wanted to use SCP to save your config file. Let's now talk about JWeb, which is the web management utility for Junos. Just like how we make configuration changes using the command line, we also have the option to use the web management utility, which is a graphical user interface, to make changes on the Junos device. But before we start using JWeb, we have to enable JWeb on the Junos device using the CLI. So let's go back to the device and I'm going to show you show system, excuse me, and I'm going to show you show system. Look at this here, show system services. 
Inside web management, you need to enable the protocol that you want to use for web management. In this case, I've enabled both HTTP and HTTPS. Let me do this. Let me actually navigate inside this configuration item. So I'll say edit system services web management. As you can see, I'm here, edit system services web management. I'm going to hit show. And as you can see here right now, you need to enable the protocol that you want to use for web management. It is always recommended that you use HTTPS instead of HTTP. You also need to specify the interface that will be using the protocol. In my case, I've enabled HTTP only for interface VLAN.0 and I've enabled HTTPS for interfaces VLAN.0 and FE001.0. For HTTPS, I'm actually using a self-signed certificate, also known as a system-generated certificate. You could also use a certificate that has been signed by a CA. If you're using a self-signed certificate, that means that your browser is going to give you a warning message when you try to connect to the GUI because the browser does not recognize the certificate that is being presented by the Juno's device. Okay, so remember, you have to go to Edit System Services, Web Management, specify the protocol, HTTP or HTTPS or both, and then the interface that's going to use that protocol. Let's now try connecting to the device. I have Firefox opened here and I've pointed it to 192.168.1.20 which happens to be the IP address of my device. I'll hit enter and it gives you a warning because the browser does not recognize the certificate that the device is presenting. So we can go to advanced and we can say add exception, confirm the security exception and now you get the login prompt. So now you can use the credentials login hit enter and it shows me the beautiful graphical user interface of Junos. As you can see on the left hand side it has all the features, all the commands that you can do from the command line interface. We'll be talking more about JWeb in a dedicated video. We'll understand all these options but for now just remember that we need to enable web management on the command line before we can go ahead and access the graphical user interface. All right, so that's all the topics that I wanted to discuss in this video. We looked at Juno's commit, we looked at Juno's rollback, configuration files, and JWeb. In the next video, excuse my handwriting, <laughs> in, the, in the next video, we're gonna start by looking at initial config. So this is the first time we're going to get on the device and perform some configuration changes. So we'll start with initial config. We'll start with setting the root password, by the way, I'm just realizing that my handwriting is really, really bad. So we'll start by looking at um, configuring the root password. We'll look at configuring the host name. We'll also configure time and date settings. We'll also understand how to set up management access. And we'll also talk about some login classes and login users. So that's going to be the plan for the next video. I'm really excited to see you there. And I'd like to thank you for watching.